Hi, Gretchen. This is Dan. Dan, how are you? Hey, good, good, good. Yeah, I was talking to Mel earlier, so I guess I can just make you host right now. Yeah, that would work. And then I guess you just take over. Yep. Awesome. And right now you're the host. Uh, are you going to go ahead and get the uh, recording going and all that good stuff, or you want me to hang yep. on for that? Yep, I can do that. What am I supposed to do, Gretchen? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I'm definitely is... not getting on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, I'll stay on till four. Once okay. it's rolling, uh, once I see the camera go live, um, I'll go ahead and pretty much cut out. Okay. Um, are you familiar with uh, Spaces? Instant yes. messaging? I yeah. will be up on there. So okay. if you need something. I'll kind of monitor that instead. Okay, perfect. All right. And awesome. I'll go ahead and mute myself again. Awesome. Thanks. All right. No problems. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
Hi, Anne. I see you joined the call. When your petition comes up, I will unmute you and you'll be able to present to the board, okay? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Greg, I see you're on the call. When your petition comes up, I will unmute you so you can present to the board, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you.
Hello, Clayton Suter here. Hi, Clayton. I see that you're on the call. Um, whenever your petition comes up, I will unmute you and you'll be able to present to the board, okay? Okay, I'm still trying to get on the uh, WebEx on my computer, but it says it's connecting. It's taken a long time, so I'm not sure what's going on, but that's why I want to make sure I got in on Yep, somehow, I got gotcha. you. Know. Okay, yeah, I'll keep an eye out, but... But this works too, everybody. Yep. Okay, so this works too, though? Okay. Yep. Because I don't necessarily need to see anything, so this works yeah. for me. Yep, this. yep, awesome. All right, thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, Dan, question for you. Okay. Um, so when I'm in the attendee stuff, it makes it where I have to like request them to unmute. Is that normal now for this or is that going to be? Um, I assume they just raise their hand down on the bottom. Yeah, the so base. Yeah, so basically what I do is whenever I see that they are when I see there's a new attendee on the call, I check and let them know like, hey, I see you're on the call. Or sometimes if they come in as a call-in user, I have to unmute them to know what they're here for, to know if like they're here, or, like a petitioner or if they're a representative for the petitioner. So I'm not sure if that's something we can fix, you know, in the future. Uh, uh, can I get with you tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you the call's getting them... close. Um, yeah, no, yeah, anyway, that's totally can... fine. So yeah, I, I just wanted to let you know. Really which one yeah, uh, yeah, perfect. So basically, yeah, when and I'll take a screenshot in, of it and I can send it to you. Have Mel yeah, send it to you. This is like my second one. What I've noticed: people raise their hands, and then I guess you go in and unmute them after that. Um, so we can do that. Um, that's what I, that's how I've seen it done. Yeah, but typically prior to the meeting, I also check because we let the petitioners present. Right. So we have to be able to talk to them prior because especially whenever there is. Oh, gotcha. In this instant, we have in like one that's a call in user. Mm -hmm. So I have to know which petition they're here for in order to unmute them to give their presentation to the board. No, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, by all means, um, I'm going to go ahead and get your recording, get it loaded, okay. and then I'll contact you tomorrow. I've got a couple of meetings early in the morning. Okay. So it'll yeah, probably be fine. around lunch, lunch time if that's okay. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. That should okay. work. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Steve, I do see you're on um, on the call. So whenever you're going to be the first one up, so I'll unmute you whenever that happens. Let's see here. Clayton, I see you have your hand up. Can uh, you unmute yourself for me? OK, Clayton, you're unmuted. Um, I do see you on here now, so. OK, and you can hear me as well? 
you're good. Okay, awesome. So I'm, I'm going to hang off on the hang up on the okay, cell phone. Then. Perfect. Yep. All gotcha. Right. Thanks. Yep. So it looks like we're still waiting on Angelia. Unless somebody else sees her. If you just joined this call, could you please state your name? Uh, Patrick Enright. Patrick, all right. And is there a particular petition you're here for today? I'm looking for a variance on uh, okay. yep. a port, uh, property on. Awesome, yep, gotcha. All right, Patrick, so whenever um, the petition you're here for comes up, I will unmute you and you'll be able to present, okay? Very good. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Gosh. Hi, Angelia. I was thrown off a little bit by the password, but I found it. <laughs> I wasn't used to uh, putting one yeah. in. Yeah. And then Debbie, um, I think you're on mute, but the only petitioner I don't have yet is 18-23, Mary uh, Bugaki. So I don't know if that you knew anything further on that one. We still have a few minutes, but I just wanted to let you know. Okay, yeah, I haven't heard from anybody. Okay. So, yeah, that one we may just have to move towards the end, and then if we, if I still don't see anybody, we can just reach out to him, I guess, another day. Somehow I've come in as Jen host and stuff. I, yeah, I don't know how you managed to do that, but I was like, okay, we're just no, going to have me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we're just going to have a few of us on here today. Is that, that's fine. Edit display name. Here we go. <laughs> Where was this password that we needed? So I believe when I logged in, it's when you scroll down on like the very, like you click on the event on in your calendar and it shows like the link, like click this button to go to the link. You scroll down and it like provides the panelist password and like a, just a general population password. Um, I'll take a screenshot of it, Debbie, and I can send it to you. No, so that's that we okay. I just, uh, yeah, didn't I know think where it was because I clicked on your email that you sent. I didn't click in the calendar. 
Yeah, that's I went through the calendar and so then it was open just opened back up. Um, but we'll probably just want to keep it front and center when we notify people too, because I'm assuming the attendees needed to put it in at that point. Instead of the old way where you put in your email and your password. Mm -hmm. I think so. Well, the, um, email, right. the attendees use BZA0405. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I put put in. Yeah, but that's I guess because I came in as an attendee, so maybe I had a different experience than what you're talking about, Debbie. All right. Okay, I'm ready when you guys are. So, Dan, are we just going to leave this recording going as is? I would just let it keep running. Um, okay. And tomorrow, I'll go ahead and uh, put it on our server, and like okay, I said, we'll talk maybe around noonish. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, Angelia. You're good whenever you're you're ready to start. Okay. I would like to call the meeting of the St. Louis County Board of Zoning Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Angelia Bills Chair and Justin Randall Vice Chair. The Department of Planning staff members are Debbie Nesbitt, Mel Wilson, Abby Freudel, Ashra Mikramathalaka, Peter Grine, and Gretchen Arnold. Also on the call today is John Burford from the St. Louis County Counselor's Office. First, I'd like to offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting, April 5th, 2023. The board hereby takes official notice of and admits into evidence on the record the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance Chapter 1003, the St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended, and Chapter 1004, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended. Next, I would like to call for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous VZA meeting of March 22nd, 2023. I'll move to approve the minutes. And I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aries. This meeting is conducted as a teleconference and is recorded. The planning staff will read each request into the record and present technical advice to the board if needed. The petitioner will be unmuted, state their name, and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the reason and hardship for the requested variance. The board will not consider financial hardships. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts. When the board is satisfied with the material presented, the chairperson will then ask if there is anyone in favor or opposition to the request to do so. Click the hand next to your name. If any comments were submitted, staff will read them into the record. Before a call for the vote, the petitioner may request a continuance in order to bring in additional documentation. The board may also request a continuance to gather additional information or for a visit to the site. Once comments have been heard, the chairperson will call for a vote. At that time, the discussion has ended. No further discussion is permitted. The board will generally make a decision today. Since there are only two members at this time, if the board's vote is split one to one, the request will be deemed denied. If a variance is approved, the petitioner has six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use requested or the variance will expire. The petitioner or any interested party has the right of appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. Paperwork indicating the board's decision will be mailed to the petitioners. All right, 16-23 Arsenal Credit Union is a request for an exception to the front yard and sign regulations for the purpose of replacing signage at 14305 New Halls Ferry Road, maintaining a front yard of 10 feet in lieu of 15 feet and a sign height of 10 feet in lieu of 8 feet, as required by the C8 Planned Commercial District Regulations in Section 1003.168 Sign Regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and C8 Ordinance 23545. Steve, at this time, I'm going to send a request for you to unmute and you are a you can unmute on your end and you can present good afternoon everybody um recently arsenal credit union updated their branding for all of their stores um they have a monument design they've used at three other locations in the st louis area we're hoping this can be the fourth so as you said our request is to keep a 10-foot setback from the property line which is similar to the setback of the monument we plan to remove 
and we're also requesting an additional two feet of overall height. The logo is a square, um, and the code allows us to go as big as seven by seven or 49 square feet. Um, but we need a de decent clearance from the ground in order to make room for the surrounding plants and bushes and not be obstructed by them. So we're hoping to be allowed 10 foot overall height, uh, which will allow for a three foot tall base. In addition, the credit union also sits across the street from Bank of America, which has a sign that's over 20 feet tall. So this extra height should help Arsenal Credit Union be a bit more competitive visually for the area. So is this a high traffic area? I mean, it's four lanes on New Hall's Ferry, I believe. It's actually my neighborhood and I did, I've never noticed that sign. So that's very interesting. Uh, what is, what is the closest intersection? Um, I need to check a map. And find out in just a moment. It would be Lindbergh. Lindbergh and New Hall's Ferry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I live in that neighborhood and I haven't noticed the signs. That's kind of interesting to me. So the setback for that sign, the current sign, are you going to put it in the same space or are you? It's actually, going to... it's going to move to the other side of the driveway, um, but yeah, it'll have the same setback as the current one. Okay. Do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Is there anyone in favor or opposition? I don't see any hands raised at this time. So, Steve, I'm going to mute you so the board can take a vote. You're um, good. What are the numbers for this? 16-23. Uh, okay, 16-23, I vote to approve the variances advertised. And the hardship just being it's a high traffic area and it will increase their visibility. I'll second that motion. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, none opposed. The motion is. All right, 17 23, Greg Sheckle is requesting an exception to allow the construction of a 30 foot by 40 foot detached garage, which will be more than half of the footprint of the home and over 1000 square feet in size at 10532 Roxana Drive, as required by section four of the R2 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. And Greg, I'm gonna send a request for you to unmute and you can go ahead and present. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm petitioning to build that 30 by 40 uh, detached garage um, where I'm building it on my property. I guess why I would need the variance would be because where I'm building that on my property, where it needs to be is 45 feet from my house. And the only other option would uh, be to build a walk covered walkway from my house to the garage. And I think that that would look a lot worse than just having a garage standing on its own. And I've seen other garages in the area bigger than the one I'm proposing that aren't attached. So that's about it. So do you have a current garage? Yes, it's a two car attached to the house right in front of that gray SUV. The garage door faces the backyard. I mean, this is almost as big as your existing house. Um, yes, with the, uh, our, my house is, uh, I think, just under 1,500 square feet. And my, my lot is uh, 20,000 square feet, so I'd only have 2,600 feet or so taken up by structures. 
the code, this might be for city staff, the code allows for up to 50% of their living space. Uh, here it says 50% or oh, it says, which would be more than half of the footprint of the home or over a thousand square feet. Right, so, so you're allowed up to 50%. Right. Uh, not more than a thousand. Square feet. Yes, not right. more That's than a the thousand. threshold is either a thousand square feet or over half the footprint of of the home. Correct. Okay, so with it being half the footprint, then he's uh, he can get up to seven hundred and fifty. Yes. Oh, will you? Will you? So, when you build this garage, you're going to keep the garage you already have as well. Um, eventually, I like to turn it into like a master bedroom. So, I guess. You know, we have to make decisions on these based on a hardship. What can you help us out with what your hardship is that you need a, a garage that's almost the same size of your existing house? Um, I mean, basically, I got th over I got three vehicles and uh, side by side in a boat. Um, so I was wanting to put them all inside and uh, that way they weren't sitting outside in the driveway. Have any further questions, Justin? No, I don't have any other questions. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I'm not seeing any hands. So at this time, Greg, I'm going to mute you so the board can take their vote. I am checking the size of the house so that we know for sure what that, you know, what the size is. Um, the assessor's record, which, you know, with a grain of salt is not perfect, says ground floor area and total living area are the same at 1,491 feet, square feet. Um, can staff, can you go back to the aerial of the, the site? Then I think I saw an yeah. aerial. I mean, I'm not super familiar with that area, but just kind of looking, I don't, I mean, I don't see any other homes in that neighborhood that have a large detached garage. If you went north on Roxana Drive here, you would hit Lindbergh Boulevard and straight across there is Lindbergh High School. So this is just south of Lindbergh High School. Gotcha. Yeah. And for context to these aerials um, that you're seeing with how zoomed and I have it, this aerial is probably from 2018. So that could also, there could be some on the newer like aerials um, when I'm further back. Yeah, but I, on I this particular, yeah, I'm not sure if that would be, yeah. Wouldn't the garage from the uh, application plan that he submitted, wouldn't the garage be kind of behind the house? It looked like it came over mm -hmm. to where the garage you know, or where the fence, it would take, he'd have to take down some of the fence. So it really couldn't be seen from the street. It's pretty much behind the house. I, I, I struggle with these large uh, structures. Um, you know, I don't, I don't just because they've got cars and boats and things like that. I don't, I don't see those technically as hardships. Um, you know, that they've, they've bought those things. Um, I don't know. I, I, I struggle with these, um, 
so. Angelia, do you have any thoughts? Um, I, I really don't see uh, enough for a hardship, personally. I mean, because he already has a two, he already has a two car garage, and he can't build another structure up to seven hundred and fifty square feet. So I, I don't see enough for a hardship. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at too. Adjustment. There's um, also the option to build an attached addition. So sure. when, if it was attached, it wouldn't be a de you know, an accessory detached structure, Correct, um, yeah. which would be another option to to increase yes. living space without needing the variance or increase that that area yeah. that storage. Air, yeah, okay. Yeah. Big, big yeah. Well, based on based on that discussion, I'm gonna uh, in the matter of 17-23 recommend uh, denial of the requested variance uh, due to the lack of a uh, proven hardship. I second it. All those in favor of opposing, I guess. <laughs> Say uh, aye. Aye. Motion carries. The motion is denied. I believe that's how that was said. So, um, 18 23, I don't see the individual on the call at this time. So, I'm going to skip past 18 23 and move on to 19 23 for you guys. Okay. All righty. 19 23, Ann Bradley is re a request for an exception to the rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing slash replacing deck boards at 1756 Preston Center Drive maintaining a rear yard of nine feet in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R4 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance MPEU Ordinance 22,471. And I am going to put a request in for you to unmute and you can present to the board. Hi, thank you. Um, I am requesting a variance for my rear yard. Um, I. Uh, purchased this home um, with a an existing deck. Um, it's a wooden deck, and um, I would like to replace the wooden decking boards and railings with composite material um, to improve stability and safety. Um, we plan no change to the actual structure, no change to the existing footprint. Um, we just want to replace the the boards. Um, and the rear yard is um, when it measured, I believe it was 9.96, so um, 10, pretty much 10 feet. Um, and the rear yard um, is a common ground behind us. So um, we would just like to request the variance so that we could um, replace the, um, the wood, um, which is, getting older and we wanted to replace that with uh, composite decking. I don't have any questions. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any questions either. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody at this time, so I'm going to mute the petitioner. Uh, 19 23. I vote to approve the variance as advertised, and the hardship is the need to upgrade the deck and put it in the same place it was before. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 20 23. Clayton and Angelia or Angela Sutter um, are requesting an exception to the side yard regulations for the purpose of constructing an attached two car garage at 5419 Edelweiss Lane, maintaining a side yard of seven feet in lieu of 10 feet as required by the R2 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. And Clayton, let me unmute, send a request for you to unmute and you are good to present. Everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So I had this uh, variance approved back in August, uh, but between uh, planning the rest of the house and designing it, unfortunately expired uh, last month. Um, but what I'm asking for is the same exact variance uh, from August. 
Um, it's it's encroaching the side yard by maybe, man, I'd say like five square feet on that south corner. I'm not sure if you guys have a picture or not. Should. Be another one in there. I think it's coming up. Yeah, so right there you can see that south side of that. So we we tried to build this garage um, to uh, encroach as little as possible on that variance, on that setback. Uh, so you can see that little corner right there uh, where the overhang is um, in, the, in the foundation. It's going to encroach, you know, very minimally. Um, like I said, it was approved back in August, but uh, my my thought process was get the footprint approved and then build from and then design from there uh, rather than investing a lot of money in architects and engineers. So uh, with revisions and changes and stuff like that, um, unfortunately, we were unable to meet that six month uh, window. So just here to request uh, the variance once again. And Clayton, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't your property slope pretty severely from the left side of your where you're proposing the garage to the right it, side? Yeah, it does. So the right side is basically you, it's a ranch, but it's built on a hill. So the right side, uh, it's it's basically a two story on the right side of the house or the north side. And then the south side where we want to build the garage is on grade. Uh, there is a slope to the backyard, which we will build up um, and put a retaining wall um, uh, against the house where the garage is meeting the house. Um, but uh, the the idea of the garage is uh, to have a first floor uh, walk in for the garage for my wife and children. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Angela. Okay, I don't have any. Um, well, I do. So your hardship, what is your hardship for this again? Uh, so the hardship is we don't, we have a single tuck under garage, which is extremely small. Uh, this is a house that my grandpa built in 1955. So uh, neither of our cars fit in it. Um, I have a truck and my wife has an SUV. Uh, we are expecting another child here uh, this fall. So um, for covered parking and for first floor access to minimize uh, outdoor parking with kids and loading them and unloading them, uh, this is this is kind of our, um, you know, uh, the route we want to go. Okay. Staff, can you can you put up the um, aerial that had the property lines on it too? <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right, I don't have any other questions. I don't either. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody, so at this time I'm going to mute the petitioner. Okay. Uh, in the matter of 20-23, I vote to approve the variance as advertised, uh, with it just being that the hardship is just a need for covered parking. Uh, and giving them adequate space for their ve for their vehicles. Yeah, I, th I think you can, I would add to the hardship claim, the irregular shaped lot, as well as the topography. But I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. All right, 21-23, Mike Gross is requesting an exception to the rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a deck at 9918 Tesson Creek Estates Drive, maintaining a rear yard of 10 feet in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R4 Residence District Regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance, MPEU Ordinance 14705. And Patrick, I'm going to send a request for you to unmute and you'll be able to present. Maybe. Patrick, if you can unmute yourself, you can present to the board. If he's the call in user. Yeah, oh, maybe there, we go. No, there we go. Uh, yes. Are you there? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Patrick. I'm calling and trying to file for a variance on the back of the house at 9918 Tesson Creek. 
a state drive. All I'm doing is uh, tearing down the porch that's already existing and rebuilding with the same footprint. It's not going to exceed any further than what's already there. It's just uh, the wood is rotten and the porch needs to come down and it's going to go back up just the way it is. Um, I think the porch is, is 13 feet off of the property line and then they have a pair of switchback set of steps that come down uh, that extends it out to that 10 feet that we talked about that you'd mentioned. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not changing anything as far as the footprint of the porch. It's just going right back up the way it is. But it needs to be replaced. The wood is rotten and uh, it needs to go. It's a uh, walk out from the first floor porch. So it's not like they can just put a patio back there. And... I don't have any questions, Angelia. I don't either. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody at this time, so I'm going to mute the petitioner's representative. All right, you're good. Okay, in the matter of 21-23, based on the petitioner uh, indicating that the setback will not be encroached on any further uh, to replace existing decking, I will recommend a, a motion to approve as advertised. I second it. All those in favor, aye. In favor? Yeah, sorry, I said I, yeah. Oh, sorry, I could hear you. The motion passes. All right, and then I did not see anybody for 18-23 jump on the call at this time, so I guess we'll follow up with them and see. So that's all we had for you guys today. Sounds great, thank you. All right, thanks guys.